if we're talking disappointing starts, where else could we go besides the Los Angeles Chargers, who at this point defy explanation? Like, my job is to help you make sense of it all, and I don't know how with this team. Week one, they run for 234 yards. They win the turnover battle two to nothing, and they lose to Miami. This week, they go to overtime with a Tennessee Titans team that looked absolutely toothless in week one. Titans struggled putting together first downs against the Saints in week one. Ryan Tannehill throws three interceptions. Week two, 341 yards, 27 points against an absolutely loaded Chargers defense, or loaded on paper anyway. At this point, I don't think we can say that anymore. It's no surprise that Brandon Staley was testy with reporters after this game, asking if that devastating playoff choke job against the Jaguars is lingering in their minds. Now, he insists that it's not. But please, somebody help me pinpoint a reason why a team with this much talent who actually has played pretty damn well through two weeks is 0-2. The Chargers are averaging 29 points a game. Justin Herbert looks like incredibly deserving of the massive contract he got. It's not like he's struggling to find his rhythm or struggling to find his receivers. The offense is clicking. The defense has however many hundred million dollars in contracts on it. And this team is 0-2. And I mean, Dolphins game, fine. Somebody's got to lose that game. But don't sit here and tell me, all due respect to the Tennessee Titans, that this was a loss to a team that's going somewhere meaningful later in the season. If that turns out to be the case, I'll email the Tennessee Titans a personal apology letter. It's mind-boggling. It's incredibly disappointing. And even in week two, it makes you wonder where this is going for the Chargers, who now have to dig out of an 0-2 hole, And where this is going for Brandon Staley, who, if the wins don't start coming, some very uncomfortable conversations are going to begin. Spoiler alert, they've already started. Yes, I know. It's only September 18th. Moving on. We're sticking in the AFC. We're sticking to a team that's arguably more disappointing, but we know exactly why, and that's the Cincinnati Bengals. There's no mystery here. The Cincinnati Bengals offense is in crisis. And if you want to say it's because of Joe Burrow's calf injury, I would say that you're probably right. It's clearly affecting him. He didn't have a training camp. He seemed to aggravate it late in this 27, 24 loss to the Baltimore Ravens. But when you sign a $275 million contract, people don't want to hear it, man. It just is what it is. The Bengals are one of the most explosive, entertaining offenses in the NFL, or at least they have been. It has not been the case in the early going of this season. The Bengals offense in two games has accumulated 424 yards. Four different teams did better than that on Sunday alone. Speaks to the problems. Like I said, they're easy to pinpoint. Lou Anarumo and the Bengals defense, nothing to hang your head about. They played well enough to win in both of these games, losses to Cleveland and Baltimore. Oh, by the way, you're not just 0-2, you're 0-2 in the division. It ain't the defense. We know exactly what it is. Unfortunately, I don't know how quickly Joe Burrow can get his calf right if he's playing every six days, but they got to figure something out because yes, the Bengals dug out of an 0 2 hole last week last year, but that was with a healthy Burrow. Like you can maneuver the problems with the offensive line and find ways to manipulate your game plan with a healthy quarterback. If he's not healthy, it ain't gonna work. And like I said, when you're worth $275 million, nobody wants to hear it. Bengals, figure it out. Moving on. New face in Denver, very similar results. The Denver Broncos are 0-2. And while I don't think anybody had, or at least not very many people, I shouldn't say anybody, not a ton of people had lofty expectations for the Denver Broncos considering that they share a division with the Kansas City Chiefs. But when you hire Sean Payton, the Super Bowl winner, one of the best resumes in the NFL today, I think you would have expected them to beat the Raiders or the Commanders or potentially both. Like, it wouldn't be shocking if the Broncos were on the flip side of this thing as one of our surprise 2-0 and teams, and instead they drop two very easy-looking games, both of them at home. Yes, They are playing more competent football. Like the crowd's not helping them with the play clock, which I guess is a step in the right direction, but the results aren't any better. I mentioned it earlier, despite some pretty massive investments on the offensive line, allowing seven sacks is going to get you beat 
at virtually any level of football. Russell Wilson terrorized by that commander's front. Didn't stop him from building a 21-3 lead, but it all falls apart after that. Again, I didn't have the Broncos going to the playoffs, but both of these were winnable games. You feel fine at one and one. It, it's got to make Sean Payton sick to think that this team could be 2-0 and with even slightly better play. We'll finish it up with a team. Did not play Sunday, but we all remember the six-point loss the Vikings suffered in Philadelphia on Thursday night. I'll keep it short and sweet with these guys. You've probably heard it already. Minnesota Vikings were 11-0 and in one-score games in 2022. They are 0-2 in two, in two such opportunities so far this season. Losing by three to Tampa in week one. They fall by six, 34-28 to Philly in week two. The sick thing, again, if the Vikings were even just mediocre at ball security, they might be a 2-0 team. They've turned the ball over seven times in two games. If they, let's just say four, and that's not even a good number, but let's just say they've turned the ball over four times. They've got a very good shot to be 2-0. Two, to be it's got to make you sick when you know how wide open that NFC North is, which the nice thing is, I have what? The, the entire NFC North lost in week two, I believe. Green Bay goes down to Atlanta. Detroit falls to Seattle. Vikings fall in Philadelphia, and the Chicago Bears get housed in Tampa. So, yeah, if there's a team that's probably feeling good about 0-2, it's probably the Minnesota Vikings. But, again, hold on to the ball even averagely, and you're sitting in a much better spot. Like I said, can't be a fun place in that Vikings film room.